Hey guys, what we have here is a Crescent Firearms Company double barrel shotgun. Uh, what this is coming for, the owner wants the barrels re -blued. So there's some, some pits that's been steel wooled all down the, uh, all down the barrel and along the rib there. And uh, there's some some really deep ones over there. You feel one there. Anyway, so he wants that re-blued. Does nothing. Doesn't want anything done to the stock. Just wants the action re-blued. These were originally color case hardened, and you can see some of the color case hardening over there. But anyway, he wants it blued, and and that's what I'll do. And then there's also a problem that hammer doesn't want to cock and that trigger is way far back you can't get your finger into the to the to the second trigger that trigger cocks or the hammer that hammer cocks but you can't hardly get your finger in there to work it so something's a miss on on this and uh, we'll see what it is when we get in there found the problem with that uh, right hammer that didn't want to cock or stay cocked um, the sear spring so this gun crescent gun works made extensive use of coil springs instead of leaf springs so normally a dull barrel shotgun would have a leaf spring that operates the hammer and another little leaf spring there that works the sear and uh, they use a wire spring um, like an S, S uh, shaped wire spring and the right barrel doesn't have one it's missing so there's nothing to to push the the sear forward to to engage with a sear notch on the hammer um, and these are not available no one's got so we're gonna have to try and make one so I got the the spring on the left on the left uh, sear and I'm gonna use that one as a template to make uh, another one so when you take a spring like that out don't back the screw out all the way because the tension on that spring as it comes out it will actually push the spring over and damage the threads so just back it off enough so that you can get the spring over that little lip there now you can remove the, the, the spring or the screw without having any tension on the threads and without uh, stripping out those uh, fine threads. Anyway, there's our template. We're going to try and make it from there. Installed um, the spring off the left hammer onto the right sear just to make sure that it's uh, that it's interchangeable and that it actually will uh, will work. And uh, it, and it does holds the hammer back. And I can drip the drip the sea over there. There you go. Two uh, two new springs bent. There's the original or the sample. And there's two new ones bent from just straight uh, wire wire stock. Got a piece the same gauge as the original. I just bent those up. Got that crescent shotgun apart. The the action all stripped out, got the firing pins out. So this gun has been restocked at some point. Somebody made a a stock for it, and they did a pretty good job. There is a bit of a weird fix though. So it's a good fit. The part where they got that they got wrong is. There's a bolt that moves through there, which uh, which is lock up, and it goes in there for lock up, and the top lever actuates that, and there is a wire spring that goes into that hole and interacts on that phase face to give you spring 
it's a it's a U wire spring that goes in there. And what they did was some Heath Robertson fix. If I can find it in the bag in the in the bag of goodies. So they used a coil spring and they drilled a hole over there for the coil spring and that coil spring then pushes up onto that bolt and it's very weak so this is a, is a very the spring on this was very very weak also I mean that hole they drilled in there weakens the uh, the stock although I don't know how many shots it's got through it after it's been restocked so there's two two ways of doing this is either leave that spring there and put a wire spring in um, you know put the correct spring in there and the two can work together or take this out and epoxy that up so to strengthen strengthen it up so the rest of it's all apart it's all very gungy and needs to be cleaned out got the hammers off that lock has got the right to uh, screw in the other lock has got some it's got a brass screw in it's the right th uh, thread though but it's a brass brass screw and you can see the color case hardening that it's supposed to it's supposed to be there I'll, I'll black it up as per the owner's owner's request he, do, he doesn't want anything done to the wood so I will leave the wood as is maybe just give it a light a light buff Crescent double barrel shotgun and BB single barrel shotgun receivers in the conversion pot busy cooking away all the grime and converting all the red rust to inactive black oxide applying a rusting solution I use Laurel Mountain barrel brown and degreaser and I put it on a little cotton pad get a bit on it important bit is to use long even strokes with a minimal overlap between your uh, your layers so you get a point where you start and uh, don't don't rub just long even get into the difficult spots you do not want to rub and you do not want it to run if you rub you will rub your bluing off and if you overlap you can also rub the bluing off but more import importantly if you rub you can get what's called uh, like a copper plating and on the on the overlap you can get copper plating and that is very difficult to get off so everything just gets a, a very thin layer and this being a a degreaser it's not that critical that um, you need to wear gloves on it I do wash my hands just get all the difficult just give it a give it a wipe it's not that critical that you if you miss a spot because you're doing several several uh, layers but try not to double up on a particular spot uh, like the hammers are very difficult to uh, to get into because of all the nooks and crannies that you got to deal with and you can wet up your pad if it starts to run dry and uh, I do it straight out of the uh, out of the bottle I don't put it over and what I'll do is I'll wet on the back side so that I don't contaminate my liquid. The 
when you do these screws it's important to do the head of the screw as well as the other end of the screw because it pokes through this is a top screw so it pokes through from the top and then you'll have a shiny screw at the bottom if you did not do if you did not rust up the uh, the tip of the screw side plates running it down there running it down there and around the screw I've left the screw that holds the um, sear spring in so that that tip can be glued up there you go now let it rust for 18 to 24 hours after rusting for 24 hours that's what we got on the barrels side plate and the action starting to get co uh, rust coverage on it now it needs to be carded i cut off the thin film of rust with a green scotch bright pad to me it looks uh, good and you can see how it progressively turns a duller a duller brown or duller rusty color when i when i rub off the uh, the rust and all you're doing is you're trying to, to get the kind of rust crystals to to remove the rust crystals if you don't and you just let it rust uncontrolled it will actually rust pit pit marks into the uh, into the steel you don't want to remove the rust you just want to get the uh, the surface crystals that fall you want to get them off then there's the barrel you get just a, a dusty layer or a rusty dusty layer there you go get the rust off like that and put on the next uh, the next rust cycle once you got a coat of rust on it and you got it carded you get a, a rusty matte finish and that makes it a lot easier for you to see where you still need to add uh, your, your next layer because you get a, a definite wet look when you uh, when you apply or uh, when you just start off it's not that easy to see um, where you need to to apply or where you've missed. Anyway, this is the third layer of rusting solution that's going on. What I normally do is I do six cycles, rusting cycles, and then I cook it. And then I do six more. Six uh, rust cycles going into the pot for the first cook. Six rust cycles later on the barrels, ready to go into the pot to be converted to black oxide. In the pot, waiting to uh, get to a boil. Okay, straight out the pot. I started carding it at the bottom there. So you got uncorded versus corded. After a week in the oil, start to time to assemble. See if it came out good. Everything needs to go onto the receiver before it goes onto the stock. Side plates go on last. On the stock, I tapped, filled up that hole where the coil spring was in. And I got a V-spring for the top lever. Putting the shear spring on. Get the screw in. Give it a couple of threads. And then help it over the little ledge. Tighten up the screw. Check that it works. The hammer. Got some new hammer screws for it. 
Get the hammer on there. Don't use the, hat, the screw to pull down the hammer. Tap it on or uh, work the square. Those threads are just too small to pull that, uh, that hammer on. Make sure all the oil is out of the hole before you put the screw in. Locks complete, caulks, and it releases. Assembling the firing pins. The firing pin is in two parts. It's got a little coil spring on the front section that goes in first, and then you got the little um, extension bit that uh, goes in behind that, and then the collar to keep it in. Next up, getting the bolt that locks up the action in, as well as the top lever and the V-spring that operates that, uh, that bolt. That protrudes out the front, lock, locks up on the bottom lug of the barrel. That lever transfers the power from the top lever to the bolt. Get that in, and then the top lever goes in. Once the top lever is in, it should, it should function. Still doesn't have the pivot point for that transfer lever, which is provided by the screw. When that screw goes in, that's the pivot point for the transfer lever. all together and it pulls the, the bolt back. The V-spring that uh, operates the top lever or pulls the top lever back goes into that little hole with a, uh, with a long leg and the shorter leg interacts on the top lever. That's what it looks like. I had to do some fitting on that spring, I had to take a little bit of meat off on the top of the spring and on the side just to allow it to pass the transfer lever. Nothing, uh, nothing too serious. Okay, action can go onto the stock. Slides in. On the top tang, the trigger group goes in, and then the doll's head is also on the trigger group. The doll's head goes into the action, and then uh, screws onto the stock. Doll's head screw. So uh, what's happening is the doll's head is transferring the recoil from the action to the stock with uh, with those two screws right over there and they always got to be tight get them snug snugged up Ready to get the uh, side plates on. I'll talk up the screw screws uh, off camera. The locks can now uh, can now go in. So when you put the locks in, make sure you got the you put all the triggers forward. If you don't do that, the little actuating lever that lever just pushes that trigger lever out the way, and you end up with a, a jammed up uh, trigger. So just Pull the pull the trigger forward. Slider. It's got a little I don't know little uh, lip on the front there that goes in into the uh, receiver first, and then just push it on. 
same on the other side get the uh, front front trigger forward same uh, same little lip get that in and then we need the uh, the lock screw And then there we go. Trigger works. That trigger works. Put the trigger guard in. That's like a bayonet type clip on the trigger guard so you start off at a uh, 90 degrees and you come around this one goes in easy most of them are kind of spring loaded and they don't want to fit so don't force it in if you deal with that squash the uh, the trigger guard together so you'll get that lip to uh, to sink in there this one not necessary There you go. And that's just about done. I'll uh, talk up these screws off uh, off camera. Finally, we got the uh, the fore end. It's real simple. Puts together like that. It's got one little screw over there. Goes in there. There you go there you go guys all done got it all back together just rub the stock down with some uh, four rod steel wool and some ballast style just to take all the scuff marks off same with the fore end and that's what the slow rust bluing came out like I think it's great. There's a couple of pit marks there, but the gun wasn't sanded. It was just cleaned up and rust glued. Trigger guard, receiver. good don't like this old hard pad on you as i hope you enjoyed that and found that interesting stay safe we talk again cheers